Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about Amazon EC2 Spot Instances 101. Before we start, let me tell you a little about myself. My name is Sapnil Power. I'm working as a software architect with Intensive Global Solutions Digital. I have been working with AWS uh, since a couple of years now. I'm holding a few AWS certifications, the Developer Associate, Solution Architect, and Cloud Practitioner. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can see my handler down below. So let's get started. So Amazon EC2 Spot Instances, Run Fall Tolerant Workloads. Let's look at our agenda today. We're going to first uh, gonna go through a little introduction of what is Amazon EC2. Then we're going to move into the what is EC2 Spot Instance, how Spot Instances work, how you can create Spot Instance requests, and demonstrations. So let me tell you, right? Uh, this is going to be a little theoretical. Uh, obviously, theory is important because if you get your concepts clear, then you will you may be able to enjoy the you know the hands-on labs that we're gonna cover in the demonstration. So get your concepts clear in this session. Once you have the concept clear, we're gonna have the another uh, video which is gonna be more detailed session on spot instances. So let's get started and focus on our concept first. Now, what is Amazon EC2? Uh, Amazon EC2 provides a scalable computing capacity in the Amazon Web Services Cloud. Uh, you can you know, secure compute capacity for virtually any workload in AWS. Uh, you can scale capacity with auto-scaling within minutes with SLA commitments of 99.99% availability. Using Amazon EC2 compute instances, you can eliminate your need to invest in hardware upfront so you can develop and deploy application faster. As I said, you do not have to invest in hardware upfront, uh, so, so you only pay for what you use in Amazon EC2. If you don't use it, you do not have to pay uh, for the computing that you, know, you haven't utilized. It supports processing, storage, uh, transmission of credit card data uh, by any service provider and has been validated as being compliant with payment card industry and data security standards. It also enables you to scale up and down to handle changes in requirements or spikes in popularity, uh, reducing your need to forecast traffic. So let's look at what is EC2 spot instances. Now, EC2 spot instances is an unused EC2 instance which is available for less than the on-demand price. It offers fair compute capacity in the AWS cloud at steep discounts. Uh, the hourly price for a spot instance is called as a spot price. So AWS sets the spot price for each instance type in each availability zone based on the evolving supply and demand for spot instances. Uh, spot instances are very cost effective when you can be flexible with your applications availability and when your applications can be interrupted after a two minute warning notification. Spot instances are ideal for stateless, uh, fault tolerant and flexible applications like uh, big data, containerized workloads, CI CD, web servers, high computing, uh, uh, performance computing, uh, development workloads. So these instances are closely integrated with AWS services like auto-scaling, EMR, CloudFormation, data pipeline, AWS batch. You can easily combine spot instances with on-demand, reserve instances, uh, saving plans instances to optimize workload cost and performance. And remember this point, use spot instances only when your operations can be interrupted. As I said, spot instances are ideal for stateless, error tolerant, and flexible applications like data analysis and other things. And so on. Now, why use EC2 spot instance? The important, there are three important reasons to leverage EC2 spot instances. The first reason, it is low and predictable prices. As we said, 
it provides a very steep discount compared to on demand instances and spot instances are actually available at up to 90% discount compared to on demand prices massive scalability accelerate your workloads by running parallel tasks easy to launch leverage through auto scaling and integrated with third party tools like terraform and jenkins so you know so when when you are running spot instances they are exactly same as the on demand instances however a spot does not guarantee that you can keep your running instances long enough to finish your workloads a spot also does not guarantee that you can get immediate availability of the instances that you are looking for or that you can always get the aggregate capacity that you requested moreover spot instance interruptions and capacity can change over time because spot instance availability varies based on supply and demand and past performance isn't a guarantee of future results so let me tell you again spot instances are not suitable for workloads that are inflexible stateful or fault intolerant uh, or tightly coupled between instance nodes and it is also not recommended for workloads that are intolerant of occasional periods when the target capacity is not completely available so i strongly recommend that using spot instances for the workloads or you know when you are attempting to fail over or to on demand instances to handle interruptions you should not use spot instances now please take a step further and understand uh, more about spot instance concept now if you understand this it will make it easier to make instance request and you know perform other operations related to spot instance so let's get into it so there are five different concepts spot capacity pool spot price spot instance request ec2 instance rebalance recommendation and the spot instance interruption we're going to learn each one of concept so let's go and learn first one that is spot capacity pool now spot capacity pool basically is the set of unused ec2 instances with the same type of instances so for example if you have m5 large or m5 x large and within the same availability zone so it should be a set of that same uh, type of instances that's a spot capacity pool the second concept is spot price which is nothing but the current price of a spot instance per hour the third spot instance request this is very important it's basically you request a spot instance in aws and the request provides the maximum price per hour that you are willing to pay for the spot instance so if you don't specify a maximum price the default maximum price is the on demand instance price when the maximum price that you are willing to pay for your request exceeds the spot price amazon is able to fulfill your request if the capacity is available now with spot instance request you can request spot instance uh, either one time or persistent now what is one time and persistent the request time you know one time determines whether the request is opened again when the amazon ec2 interrupts a spot instance or if you stop a, a spot instance so if the request is persistent the request is open again after the spot instance is interrupted and if the request is persistent and you stop your spot instance the request only opens after you start the spot instance now this time when this uh, might sound a little you know uh, cluttered but you know we gonna look at the diagram how a spot instance request works in the upcoming slides you will get the idea and just remember there are two different ways you can request spot instance one time or persistent is basically it determines whether the request is opened again 
when EC2 interrupts a spot instance or not. The next concept we have, uh, EC2 instance rebalance recommendation. What, what does it mean? EC2 instance rebalance recommendation is it emits an instance rebalance recommendation signal to notify you that a spot instance is an elevated risk of interruption. The signal gives you the opportunity to proactively rebalance your workloads across existing or new spot instances without having to wait for the two-minute spot instance interruption time. So there are three different rebalance actions that you can take. The first action is, you see, is a graceful shutdown. Now, graceful shutdown is basically, uh, so when you receive the rebalance recommendation signal for the spot instance, you can start your instance shutdown procedures, uh, which might include ensuring the processes are completed before stopping them. Okay, uh, so let me give an example, uh, you know, of the graceful shutdown. For example, you can upload application log to S3 bucket, and, and you know you can shut down the SQS queue workers, or you can complete the deregistration process from the DNS, and you can save your work in external storage and resume it at later time. So you save your work before stopping the spot instances. The second action that you can take is prevent work from being scheduled. Now, when you receive that rebalance uh, signal uh, for a spot instance, uh, you can actually prevent new work from being scheduled on that same instance uh, while continuing to use the instance until the scheduled work is completed. The third action that you can take is proactively launch new replacement instances. So in, in this action, what you can do is you can actually configure auto-scaling groups. You can launch EC2 fleet or the spot fleet to automatically launch replacement spot instances when a rebalance recommendation signal is emitted. So these are the three different possible rebalancing actions that you can take. Let's move ahead. The last concept we have is spot instance interruption. Now, as the name indicates, interruption, right? So when Amazon EC2 terminates, uh, stops, or hibernates, your spot instance, the, uh, when Amazon EC2 needs the capacity back. So when they need the capacity, they're going to terminate it, okay? Or they're going to stop it. Or the spot price exceeds the maximum price for your request. For example, if your maximum price for the spot instance request is $5 and if the spot price increases the $5, obviously Amazon EC2 uh, need that capacity back. Okay, So if you want that capacity, make sure that your maximum price for your request should be greater than the spot price. So Amazon EC2 provides a spot instance interruption notice, which actually gives an instance a two-minute warning before it is interrupted. So it's a two minute warning before actually Amazon takes the capacity back. So we looked at what is EC2 spot instances, what is EC2 instance. Uh, we looked at the few concepts. Now, what is the real difference between the uh, EC2 spot instance and on demand instances? So if you look at the launch time, uh, the price, and the termination, right? Uh, those are the things that differ. So if you look at the launch time on demand, it's in your control. You can launch it manually. You can terminate. But while spot is basically, it, it, it launch immediately uh, if the instance request is active and when the capacity is available. Uh, from the pricing perspective, uh, as we discussed, it gives 90% uh, more cheaper than the on demand. And obviously price varies on demand if the spot price increase and your maximum price for request decreases, it will terminate. On demand, you pay for hourly price. It's a static hourly price. On termination, spot instance can interrupt an individual spot instance if capacity is not available. But in on demand, as I said, you have the control. Um, you can manually stop, terminate, and hibernate the spot instance. Now let's look at how spot instances work. 
Now, if we look at the diagram, and as we said, spot instances, you know, is useful for a lot of different work, uh, you know, EC2, EMR, ECS, and other services. Now, before running the spot instances, uh, you should know the best practices. Now, obviously, best practices we're going to get into in our later slides, but you should, you know, don't look at the best practices for now. What you need to look at is when you're going to create the spot instance request. Uh, you can, uh, there are three ways that we can actually launch spot instances. Yeah? Uh, you can actually launch spot instances in a launch group. Now, you have to specify a launch group in your spot instance request to tell Amazon EC2 to launch a set of spot instance only if it can launch them on. In addition, if the spot instance uh, service uh, must terminate one of the instances in that launch group as a whole group, it must terminate them all. So as I said, it's a launch group. If one of the instance terminate, it will terminate the other two as well. So when that happens, when the spot price exceeds it. So when the spot price exceeds, and if, uh, if the spot service terminate one of the instances in the launch group, it will terminate them all. But on the other side, however, if you terminate one or more instances in the launch group, Amazon EC2 does not terminate the remaining instances in the launch group. The second method is launch spot instances in the availability zone group. So in this request, what you specify is you specify an availability zone group uh, to tell the spot service to launch a set of spot instances in the same availability zone. Now, EC2 did uh, not interrupt all instances in an availability zone group at the same time. If EC2 must interrupt one of the instances in an availability zone group, the others remain running. And the third one is you can launch spot instances in a VPC. You know, you can specify a subnet for your spot instance, just like you set up for your normal EC2. You know, you should use the default maximum price, the on-demand price, or, uh, you know, base your maximum price on the spot price history of the spot instances in a VPC. So these are the three ways. And you can select the behavior, uh, you know, once you select uh, the type of spot instance that you want to launch. A hibernate, stop, or terminate, and then you, you you are good to go. You can launch and scale your target capacity. Now, before moving further, as, as we saw uh, a, a couple of uh, minutes back in one of the concepts, uh, rebalance recommendation, it emits a signal, basically. You know, it, it emits a signal, basically, uh, to notify that your spot instance uh, is at elevated risk of interruption, right? So when that signal emits, you can actually monitor uh, that recommendation signal. So for example, when it emits, uh, if you want to take further action that are uh, specified in the, you know, uh, you know, you know specified in below, below list. So one is the using Amazon event bridge and uh, the second option is instance metadata. So with these two options, you can actually monitor the recommendation signal which is made available as an event, uh, you know, that is sent to this event breach and instance metadata on the spot instance. So you can take further actions. Now you might have a question, right? How do I select a spot instance? Now, as you saw how the how uh, spot uh, instances work, but when you actually wanted to launch in a, a launch group or you know availability zone on VPC. How do I make sure that I select the correct instance type? You do not need to worry about there is a, there is a method. So let's go through it, how you can uh, select a spot instance type. One of the best practices for successful adoption of spot instances is to implement spot instance diversification as part of your configuration. So spot instance diversification helps to acquire capacity for multiple spot instance pools both for scaling up and for replacing spot instances that may receive a spot instance termination notification. Now, if you look at it, there are over 475 different instances available on EC2, which can make selecting very you know, difficult. Now, there is one more, there is an open source tool 
called Amazon EC2 Instance Selector uh, that will help you select compatible instance type for your application. Now, now all you need to do is you need to uh, pass the command line arguments like uh, the virtual CPU is the memory, the network performance uh, that you require, and it will return you the available matching instance type. This uh, EC2 instance selector, it, it makes calls to the describe instance types API uh, on the specific region and filters instances based on the criteria that you mentioned in the command line. So we're going to go through in a short demonstration of this Amazon EC2 Instance Selector tool, how it works and how it, it is beneficial for you that will help you select the correct uh, spot instance type work uh, instance type for your workload. So let's head over to the demonstration. So here we are in AWS console. From the services menu, we select compute and EC2. So what I have done, I have already launched an EC2 instance. Uh, a, a sample EC2 instance that we are going to use it to install the instance selector open source tool. And so this is the uh, GitHub page of that public repo, Amazon EC2 instance selector. Uh, you will get the link in the description menu. And uh, on the readme documentation uh, shows how you can install and configure it for uh, different uh, OSs. And here are some of the examples that we're going to walk through. So before that, once you have the uh, instance on your local machine ready, so I'm going to use EC2. I'm going to uh, log into the SSH. And here so we, I'm using the EC2 instance connect method to launch to the uh, Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Here we are. I'm going to change the user root. I'm going to clear the screen. Now let me go to the GitHub repository. Okay? And before you actually uh, you know, start using Amazon EC2 Instance Selector, uh, what you need to do is you need to download this first. So they have given a command curl and we are downloading uh, version 2.0.3 of EC2 selector and assigning them an executable permission. So I'm going to copy, going to my SSH, paste. Now, once you download this, just move your file to e move your EC2, right? If you once you download this, do the LS. Now, <clears throat> now move your file under user local bin folder. Okay, since it already exists, it was showing a message. Do I, uh, no, do you need to override? Yes. Now, if you type EC2, and double tap it, it will show automatically this auto company. Okay, so I'm gonna select it. Let me delete the double appearance of. And if I do help, it's gonna show all the uh, flags or parameters, command. Uh, command line parameters that we're going to pass to that EC2 instance selector method. Now, once you download and install it, in order to use this tool, you should have the AWS access key ID and the secret access key ID. There are two methods you can generate. You can actually create a manual user in IAM and create a temporary access key and the secret key. For your users, so for logged in, uh, just uh, just uh, if you, now this I'm logged in as an IAM uh, administrator user. So if you want to create it, go to IAM, go to users, and then you know you can create the secret credentials. The other way is assign a IAM role to EC2 instance, and you can temporarily generate a STS or credentials security token service where you get the access token, secret key, 
and uh, you know uh, session token basically that will be added for certain time period now for this method i have already configured the access key and the secret key <coughs> in my uh, ec2 instance what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this command i'm going to copy it and paste it since uh, there is no other profile cli profile uh, available it will i'm set i i set it up as a default profile so what i am doing right now i am executing this command telling instance selector to show instances of virtual cpus 2 from region us east 1 as soon as i hit it you will you will get a list of all the uh, available instance type that has a virtual core cpu now you will not get whole bunch of entries if you see the note here 43 entries were truncated increase max results to see more so if i want to see all the results what i'll do is i'll put the flag max results and do 100 and it will now show all the instance types likewise now for example if you want to find an instance type that supports 100 gigabytes of networking uh, that can be purchased as a spot instances so what you know you need to do is you need to pass a pack parameter flag as network performance flag and uh, you know the kind of performance that you are looking for so i'm looking for 100 gigabytes per second you copy this command and i'm looking for us east one if you want to look for es us two you can feel free to do that and usage class is spot we are looking for spot instance so if you hit this command you will get a bunch of instance type that supports 100 gigabytes of networking performance in us east two region So if you see C5N 18x large, I3EN 24x large, R5N metal. So these are all high uh, performance uh, spot instances supports 100 gigabytes of uh, networking. So likewise, if you want to see the output in a table format, uh, there's one more flag that you need to pass dash o table. Oops, and it will show you. the table format of all the instance type with their other key keys see you have this virtual cpu and memory for each instance type that you listed earlier without the o table uh, flag so if you see 18x large has a virtual cpu of 72 uh A seventy-two virtual CPUs with a memory of one ninety-two gigabytes. Likewise, you will see a different one. So, you know this tool, uh, you know, is is a good starting point uh, to basically uh, find out what suits your workload needs. And because your workload may have other constraints, you know. Uh, Uh, you know that 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 you should you know consider when selecting the instance type. So that was the quick example of how EC2 instance selector tool can be useful. So uh, feel free to uh, install it, uh, try it at your end, and uh, see how it works. So with that said, let's move to our presentation. So we finish the EC2 spot instance selector CLI demo. Now let's look at how spot instance request work. So we're gonna see, you know, in in future uh, slides, how you can make a spot instance request through the AWS console. But for now, understand the concept how spot instance request work. So uh, to use a spot instances when you create the spot instance request, uh, you create a spot instance request with a With a desired number of instances that you want, the instance type basically, the availability zone, and the maximum price that you are willing to pay, 
per instance hour. Now, if your maximum price exceeds the current spot price, Amazon EC2 fulfills your request immediately if the capacity is available. Otherwise, Amazon EC2 wait until your request can be fulfilled or until you cancel the request. So in the diagram, when you raise a spot request, these are the parameters that you need to provide. And as I said, if your maximum price is more than the spot price, it will, will fulfill the request and the capacity will be available and instances will be launched. Now, if there is no capacity, the request will fail. Now, as you see in the diagram, and we also saw in our previous slides, there are two different ways that you can uh, raise a spot request. You can either do a one-time or a persistent request. Now, one-time request remains active until Amazon EC2 launches the spot instance. And, you know, uh, launches the spot instance or the request expires or you cancel the request. That's what one-time request uh, is. Or, or if the uh, spot price exceeds the maximum price or the capacity is not available, your spot instance will be terminated, like interrupted, and the spot instance request is closed. On the other hand, the persistent spot instance request uh, remains active until it expires or you cancel it or even if the request is fulfilled. So if the spot price, okay, bear with my handwriting, uh, I'm using house, so you will. So if the spot price exceeds the maximum price uh, that you uh, uh, said or the capacity is not available, your spot instance will be interrupted. Now, after the spot instance is interrupted, when your maximum price exceeds the spot price or capacity becomes available again, the spot instance is started if stopped or resumed or if hibernated. So what do you mean by that is, so let's say your instance is terminated and after your termination, the price that you set when requesting spot instance exceeds the spot price that AWS has set, or the capacity becomes available again, the spot instance is started if stopped or resumed if hibernated. So you can stop a spot instance and start it again if capacity is available and your maximum price exceeds the current spot price. That's a persistent way. You can actually stop the instance and start it again if the capacity becomes available. So we're going to see in the demo how you can actually uh, perform and raise a request and then you will get a more clear idea of how a one-time or persistent uh, request works. Now, when you request a spot instance you know, to the AWS console, there are six, six different states that spot instance request can be in. So it can be in open state, it can be in failed state, it can be in active state, it can be in canceled, uh, disabled, and closed. So open is basically uh, states that your request is waiting to be fulfilled. The active states that the request is fulfilled and has an associated spot instance. That means the instance has been launched. Amazon has fulfilled the request. Failed states that the request has one or more bad parameters. Closed. The spot instance was interrupted or terminated. Cancelled. Now, you cancel the request or the request expired. In that way, it goes to the cancel state. And the last is disabled. Now, disable state means you stop the spot instance. So these are the uh, six different uh, states where spot instance can be. So let's head over to our AWS console and let's look at how you can create the spot instance request to the AWS console. Here we are in uh, AWS console. Now, 
there is no separate service named spot instances but it is included under ec because it's an ec to spot instances so you can go to services click on compute and click on ec once you land into ec to management console on the left hand side under instances section you will see the spot request so i'm going to show you two ways that you can uh, request a spot instances one is with this spot request menu now once you click on it you will land like this this is my existing request please ignore that and uh, you can see here the request spot instance button okay there are spot blueprints and other thing we are not going into detail for now we're going to cover it in the another video but for now let me show you how you can request spot instances so just click on the spot instances so as we discuss you can either use a launch template uh, you can or you can manually configure the launch parameters to 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 you to, to use launch template if you want to see how you can create a launch template once you select the option there is a link that you can click on it and here is a launch template console where you can mention the template name the version uh you know the application and the os images that you want to use uh you know the instance type basically what what instance type do you want whether it's a tito micro tito small or m1 m4 the key pair you know when you want to log into the uh, instance what key pair do you want to use it a network settings obviously we are going to use it vpc way that way it will be in our own virtual private network subnet which subnet do you specifically want it whether it's us west to whether uh, us west 2a 2c in any firewall or security rule that you want to add so you can configure this i'm not going to go into detail that's not our uh, agenda today what our agenda is how we're going to create manually uh, launch parameters and see how you can you know we can create a, a spot instance request so the the spot instance that you want to request for what uh, ami that you want it do you want ubuntu you want red hat you want uh, which one you want and you can select it either you can search also so let's say we want ubuntu server 20.0 for lts i have a key pair of name that is uh, you know or if you want to keep it you can keep it optional but i want to use it under additional non parameters if you want uh, eps optimize instances we can click on it click the check box if you want to attach an instance store that's ephemeral uh, block of storage you can also uh click on at h at launch and it will attach it this is the this is the same step that you do when you launch is it on a classic way if you want to enable detail monitoring you can obviously select this a uh, tenancy whether you want a dedicated uh or no that you want to run the spot instance on a dedicated hardware so you can select that or you know for 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 now i'm going to select the for the security group basically which security group do you need to apply to our instance i want this group ssm security group any iam role that you want to attach it to the ec2 instance to perform or to access other aws services on behalf of yourself if you want to provide any user data skin that you want to install any software or any Uh, you know kind of a shell script kind of thing that you want to provide it if you want to create any taggy if you want to tag a ec2 instance you can add a tag name test spot request instances need under additional request details now if you see uh the apply default checkbox is automatically checked 
and this is a uh, as a new role created ec2 uh, spot uh, fleet tagging role uh, but if you had an active spot instance request uh, before october 2017 uh, you know when amazon ec2 began supporting this service link role uh, ec2 might have created aws service role for ec2 spot in your aws account Okay, before October 27. Now, uh, this is the default one has been created. And in the, if you go to the IAM console, if you search for that, this is basically allows EC2 spot to request terminate and tag spot instances. If you see this as some of the describe uh, request terminate permissions, also we have the create tags and run instances permission. Now, I want to change it because what it says is in default it keep the request valid for one year now if you do not want to be valid for one year just uncheck this box let uh, role will be operated automatically you do not need to change that unless you have any custom role uh, the price as i said right the maximum price you set when you raise the request versus the spot price so if you want to use the default price feel free to go for it or if you want to set your own price you can set it and you can check the pricing history basically uh, so that it will give you a clear picture when you set your maximum price so i'm going to use default the request validity now by default as i said it's valid for one year but we're gonna just validate it for a few minutes and what action do you want to perform when this request expires uh, after the validity time? So it's validated, right? You want to keep the instance or you want to terminate it. Now, I want to terminate it. Terminate it. If you do not want to terminate your instance, feel free to uncheck this checkbox. This is for load balancing. Uh, target capacity. How many instances do you want? Uh, from the spot uh, spot instance request when the two three uh, i want only uh, one request the second is maintain target capacity uh, automatically replaced interrupted spot instances and what would be the interruption behavior terminated right so whenever uh, you know, uh, instance will be interrupted. Uh, it will maintain. I mean, if, if there is an issue and if uh, the instance got terminated, it will automatically replace that instance by maintaining a target capacity of one instance. So you want to make behavior what behavior you want to maintain that target capacity, whether at stop stage or hibernate stage. Capacity rebalance. Now, if you remember in the concept, we, we learned about EC2 rebalance recommendation, uh, where EC2 emits an instance rebalance recommendation signal to notify you that a spot instance is an elevated risk of interruption. And, and that thing gives an opportunity to proactively rebalance your work. So if you click on the check capacity rebalance, uh, it, it asks for an instance replacement strategy. Where the, there are two options, launch only or launch before terminate. Now, in launch before terminate, it, the replacement uh, instances, the replacement instances will be launched and instances marked for rebalance and automatically terminated after the termination delay. So, what will happen in the launch before terminate is new instances will be relaunch before that two minute warning period uh, you know happens and your instances will be terminated so for now i'm gonna uncheck it just showing you and you know there's an option called set maximum cost for spot instances and uh, this becomes helpful let's say if you want to set a maximum price of one dollar that's a maximum that uh, you decided to set now in future, if the spot price goes beyond your $1 maximum cost, it will terminate your instance. But if the spot price is below 
your maximum cost, it will make the capacity available for you to run your workloads. So that way you can set it. Uh, VPC, I'm going to set the default VPC. And uh, whichever availability zone you want to deploy your EC2 instance. Now, important thing is instance type requirement. Right? As if you remember, we saw open source tool called Amazon EC2 instance selector. Right? Uh, where you provide the virtual CPU and memory. Uh, um, basically, uh, you know, uh, to, to find out which one is the, uh, you know, uh, best suitable instance type for your work. So, you know, there are two options. You can specify the attributes or either you can manually select the instance type. So if you, you know, if you have seen, this is the kind of same table format that uh, we have generated using that tool. So you can add the instance type if the default list does not show uh, the instance type that you require, or you can specify it in. So I'm going to specify, let's say I want one virtual CPU with no maximum and two gigabytes of memory with no maximum. Now what will happen is, as you put down these parameters, there is a section, uh, preview matching instance type. And this will list all the instance type that match your this required instance attribute section. And as you change it, it will automatically change uh, the, in the, the instance type basically. See the count, it has changed from 326 to 322. And there are different like C type and all those things are available. Any additional attribute that you want, feel free to add it. So I'm going to go with one minimum and two maximum. The next is allocation strategy. Okay. How, uh, you know, your spot fleet allocation strategy. Now we haven't looked at the spot fleet, but, you know, uh, we're going to look at it uh, in, in the upcoming video. But for now, I'm going to keep it capacity optimized based on the capacity available and the number of instances that are launched. And there's another option called lowest price, but I'm going to stick with the capacity optimized. And uh, basically your fleet request, it's showing one instance that you want to maintain always with attributes of one virtual CPU and two gigabytes of memory, sorry, two gigabytes of minimum. And there are fleet strength is, I mean, strong because there are three and 26 matching instance type. And if you see the estimated hourly price will be the 0 0.796 dollar, which is 77% savings compared to on-demand pricing. Now, once you have said this, you are, you are good to go. Just click on the launch button. Oh, spot fleet request config valid until is invalid. Oh, because it's... Uh, the timing has changed, so let me put it um, in 42. So, when it's 136 at my end, I'm going to change the timing and I'm going to click on launch. Now, as soon as you know, you launch, it will uh, see the status that your state is uh, in submitted state. Uh, uh, state. Just, just click on refresh. And if you see that your fleet is active, zero of one pending, status is in pending state because our instance is launching. Now based on the attributes that you have mentioned, it has launched M1 medium. And if you click on this capacity column, where basically that will take you to the EC2 instance screen, we can see that our test Spot request has been fulfilled and instance is made available, which is M1 medium time, which is a one time uh, uh, request. So, if you remember, there are two types where you can raise a request one time and persistent. So, this is a one time request that we have set. Uh, how to request for a persistent? Now, what will happen is 
in the one time when the spot price goes up right uh, and that, uh, than your maximum price it will terminate the instance uh, and amazon ec2 needs the capacity back so so one time persist okay? and uh, you can you can start deploying your application for my application uh, since it is an active state now so you can see the description here whatever key pair that you have selected uh, uh, whatever availability zone it has launched uh, what is the max price right uh, that you have set so i'm gonna uh, uh, cancel the request for now so if you know this is the one so you saw that how you can uh, re-request for spot instances uh, with the AWS console, you no, know, with your custom parameters. So that's it, guys. Let's head back for presentation and look for the next steps. Uh, sorry, guys. So before we head it for presentation. As I mentioned, there's a, also another way where you can request for spot instances. Let me quickly walk you through that section and then we'll head, head to our uh, you know, presentation to uh, look for uh, further slides. So, yeah. So, other method is by, by, click, by, by the way uh, of, you know, launching instances normally. So, if you click on EC2 and instances tab, Click on the launch instances menu. Uh, select the AMI that you want uh, for your workload. And just like you set the attributes while requesting spot instance uh, from the spot request console, similarly, you can select it, configure. Uh, when, when you uh, reach to the configure instance detail screen, uh, there is an option uh, called purchasing option and there's a checkbox shows request spot instances. Click on the checkbox and the number of instances that you wanted, two instances or three instances, just like we mentioned the target capacity. Here we're going to set one instances. The current price in this availability zone is this and the maximum price that you want to set uh, uh, for your spot instance so you know it can be anything so 45 cent or 50 cent and here is an option called persistent request a persistent request is basically useful uh, let's say a uh, request will be uh, submitted every time your spot instance terminated so ec2 on your behalf will raise the request every time your spot instance is terminated so you do not have to worry about it uh, it will keep uh, retrying to submit uh, whenever there is a termination happening so if you want uh, the persistent way you can click on the checkbox persistent request and when that persistent request should happen you need to select the interruption behavior as they said hibernate is not available for the instance time we selected the t1 or t2 one micro so hibernate is not available so stop so whenever the ec2 instance goes into a stop stage the ec2 will try to submit the request to you know to, to relaunch the instance and here like if you want to uh, make a request uh, valid you know for certain date and time you can also mention that I'm going to keep it any time. So this is the configuration that you can also do it from the normal classic EC2 launch uh, method. And similarly, you can follow the storage, uh, the next tags, uh, the security group that you have it. Uh, this is the security group. It's like we selected in that uh, spot instance request console and review and launch. The same way, you want to select it and you're going to launch. So I'm not going to launch it, but I just wanted to show you the uh, other method where you can actually request spot instances. 
So I hope you understood how we can uh, raise a request and launch spawn instances. Now let's head back to our uh, presentation. So, so yeah, we saw how you can raise requests uh, for the spot instances. Now, we saw a lot of theory as well as practical uh, how spot instances work, uh, what are the few different concepts of spot, uh, and you know what are the different uh, states of spot instances. Now, let's let's uh, go through uh, what is exactly the life cycle of the spot instance request. Now, we have worked, uh, you know, we saw in the console that how you can configure the parameters uh, to request for spot instances. But behind the scenes, when you submit a request, how that request gets processed, let's understand a bit of it. Uh, is it going to be, you know, mm, uh, useful so so if you see uh, this diagram okay, uh, there's a couple of uh, things now on the top you see that there is a request submitted right obviously when we fill all the details and when you click on launch, that's where the request submitted. When you submit that, it comes into the pending evaluation. So as soon as you create a spot instance request, it comes into the pending evaluation state unless one or more request parameters are not valid. Then I want to move to the if you down here there is a holding and intermediate state. So what is holding? So if uh, one or more requests that you, you know uh, submitted are valid but can't met yet, or if there is not enough capacity, the request goes into holding state. So if there is no enough capacity, the request will go into the holding stage, waiting for the constraints to be met. The request options affect the likelihood of the request being fulfilled. So uh, let, me, let me give an example. So if you specify a maximum price below the current spot price, your request stays in a holding state. As, you, as we see on the console, uh, for that availability zone, the price was 65 cents. Uh, if you put your maximum price below the 65 cents, it will go into the holding state until uh, uh, until basically your maximum until the spot price goes below your maximum price. Okay, so that's holding. Then pending, uh, yeah, uh, fulfillment. Pending uh, fulfillment, right? Now, when the constraints you specify are met and your maximum price is equal to or higher than the current spot price, your spot request goes into the pending fulfillment stage. And, you know, uh, when all the specifications for your spot instances are met, your spot request is fulfilled and Amazon launches a spot instance just like we saw earlier in the demo, which can take a few minutes. If a spot instance is hibernated or stopped when interrupted, it remains in this state until the request can be fulfilled again or the request is cancelled. So that's basically the per persistent request because EC2 on behalf of you actually uh, request. Uh, again, uh, uh, no, for this spot instance. So the different parameters, I'm not going to go do into it. Uh, I will encourage you to go to the documentation uh, 
uh, of spot request and you will get details of this overall life cycle but the important parameters is you know when you raise the request uh, how it goes from pending evaluation in which uh, way it goes into the holding and uh, you no know, running states and terminal states that's very important so let me clear my drawings okay now we are going to go okay. next uh, easy to spot instances best practices Uh, the first best practice is prepare individual instances for interruptions. Uh, the, now, the best way uh, for you to gracefully handle spot instance interruption is to architect your application to be fault tolerant. So, uh, to accomplish this, you can take advantage of the rebalance recommendation that we saw in the console as well and how you can benefit that whenever the EC2 uh, uh, you know emits a signal okay when the spot instance is an elevated uh, interruption uh, that signal will give you an opportunity to proactively manage the spot instance in advance of two minute spot instance interruption notice so a spot instance interruption notice is basically a warning is issued two minutes before EC2 interrupts the spot instance. So if your workload is time flexible, we can configure your spot instances to be stopped or hibernated instead of being terminated when they are interrupted. So I, so I recommend that you create a rule in Amazon Event Bridge. That's basically you monitor the rebalance recommendation to capture that interruption notification and then trigger a checkpoint for the progress of your workload or gracefully handles the interruption. The second best practice is be flexible about your instance types and availability zones. Uh, so depending on your specific needs, you can evaluate which instance types you can uh, flexible across to fulfill your commute compute requirements. So if the workload can be vertically scaled, you should include the instance type to a larger capacity, more virtual CPU and the memory in your request. If your workload has a requirement to scale horizontally, you should include older generation instance types because they are less in demand from on-demand customers. A good rule of thumb is to flexible across at least 10 instance types for each workload. C5, T2, T3, M4, like that, like, different uh, 10 instance types. Uh, also, in addition, make sure that all availability zones are configured to use in your VPC and selected for your workload. The third best practice is use EC2 auto scaling groups and spot fleet to manage your aggregate capacity. As you see in the uh, request spot instance uh, uh, AWS console, we have that option called as a spot fleet, where that's capacity managed or the lower price, right? Now, this basically, right, uh, you know, uh, auto scaling will give an opportunity to include vCPU, memory storage, you know, uh, in units rather than thinking in terms of individual instances. So auto scaling and spot fleet basically enable you to maintain uh, a target capacity and uh, to automatically request resources uh, to replace any that are uh, disrupted or manually terminated. Fourth is use capacity optimized allocation strategy. Now, uh, there are two options like lowest uh, price and the capacity optimized. Now, always use this capacity optimized, which is the recommended way uh, to scale uh, your uh, spot 
capacity pools with uh, you know with spare capacity so because capacity optimized strategy automatically provision instances from the most available spot capacity pools and you can also take advantage of capacity optimized uh, strategy in your spot fleet and the last best practice is use proactive capacity rebalancing capacity rebalancing helps you maintain workload availability by proactively augmenting your fleet with a new spot instance before running spot instance receives the 2 minute spot instance interruption notice now no the same capacity rebalancing like we saw earlier uh you can uh, uh you know you can utilize this option uh, you know uh, to rebalance your workload uh, to new spot instances that are not at the elevated risk of interruption no strategies for spot instances so there is only one strategy for spot instances what you need to do is you have to maintain a minimum number of compute resources by launching a core group of on demand instances and supplementing them with a spot instance when required for example let's say you have to maintain a minimum capacity of three or four instances that's going to be the on demand and uh, whatever extra uh, capacity you need for your workload when there is a demand you can you can supplement them with a spot instances in that way you pay only for the on demand instances at an hourly rate but you uh, pay cheaper price for the spot instances that you utilize when when you, when 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 the workload needs more scaling now let's go to the aws console and let's see a quick demo of how you can cancel a spot instance request and how you can stop start and terminate instance so let's head over to our aws console and let's check these two things now we are in our uh, aws console spot request so you know since in our previous demo we set the expiration time and we are uh, you know about the expiration time and due to that uh, we you know that uh, ec2 has uh, terminated our instance so what i have done is i have requested another spot instance and it has launched now it's showing the status is fulfilled because the capacity is available and it's only for one time now uh, what i have done is i have also set the time basically but i have unchecked the option of terminating the instance now what will happen now in that case i can you know this is the instance you can you cannot uh, stop the one time instance let me remember that the the one time instance right the one time type instance you cannot stop it because the reason because when the maximum price that you set uh, it goes below the spot price uh, the one time instance will be terminated the other uh, way here is And just like we saw if you maintain uh the target capacity right uh, it will it will show you the persistence of maintain and what does it mean is so after the spot instance is terminated or interrupted uh ec2 launches a replacement instance to maintain the target capacity that's where it shows the maintain uh, in a persistent column but now since we have launched it we do not have that configuration it is showing one time and that one time instance the not uh, get the other options in it like you cannot stop and hibernate it the only option is terminate it but in while well, if you launch uh, and spot instance with uh, having this maintaining at least one capacity you will get an option to start and hibernate it So in in that way you can stop the instance uh, and in some of the other way amazon uh, ec2 interrupted the stop spot instance it will try to relaunch 
or the replacement instruments to maintain the capacity. So this is uh, the one I have request. If you see, this is the request. You know, if you want to cancel the request, just select this checkbox under actions menu. Just click on the cancel request. And it, it, it shows you that kind of cancellation of this. And if you want to, uh, you know, uh, now if you uncheck this, let's see what happens. Just click on confirm. If you see that your request has been cancelled running. But what happened with the instance? Now let's head over to the instances tab and let's see what happens. It's still running. Why? Because the capacity is still available. Because my maximum price is overriding that spot uh, cost price. Now, as soon as the spot price goes up, this instance will move into the termination state because Amazon is to wants their capacity back. So a request has been cancelled, an instance is running, and it will terminate, as I said, when uh, Amazon is to request their capacity. So in that way, you can uh, you know cancel the request and you can create uh, the request basically you can modify the target capacity in case if you want to maintain uh, more than one target so with that let's head over to our presentation so this is our last slide of the presentation so let's go through some of the use cases uh, uh, to understand where you can leverage uh, spot instances and for what type of workloads, basically. The first use case is containerized workload. Uh, as you know, containers are stateless, you know, fault tolerant and great fit for uh, spot instances. So you can you know, efficiently deploy containerized workloads with uh, Kubernetes and you can manage your clusters at any scale for the fraction of a cost. It is easy to integrate with EKS and ECS. Uh, and you can run any containerized work. The second use case is big data workload. Uh, as, as we discussed in earlier slides, right? Spot instances has been easily integrated with Amazon ECR, uh, Hadoop or Spark to process massive amount of data. And obviously with that, uh, you know, that kind of workload, um, spot instances will provide you acceleration, it will give you scale and deep cost saving to run time critical hyperscale workloads for rapid data analysis. Uh, web applications as well. Uh, you no, know, you can uh, deploy uh, your applications ranging from ad servers to real time bidding servers, and we can scale to tens to thousands of instances for different web services. So, and uh, you can also scale it with the help of EC2 auto scaling. Uh, with spot instances. Uh, batch processing, uh, then, uh, you know, in your organization, there might be, uh, you know, uh, uh, cases that, you know, where you want to process your batch workload, uh, you know, and for that batch processing workload, you can leverage the spot instances. As I said, you know, like uh, that's uh, fault tolerant and stateless. So you can leverage for batch processing. As well as for machine learning, if you want to perform inference training uh, jobs or, you know, with elastic inference and because that requires a, a large computing power. So with the help of spot instances, you can utilize that computing power with for a much less cost than the on-demand instances. So, you know, you can leverage spot instances for that. So there are a bunch of other, you know, use cases where you can leverage spot instances. I urge you to go through the documentation of spot instances and I'll be sharing a documentation and other uh, related information uh, to spot instances. So with that, we are, uh, we are, we are done with the EC2 spot instances. Thank you so much for joining uh, with me in this session. I hope you understand uh, about uh, spot instances and how you can leverage spot instances to handle your workload. With that, uh, see you in the next video. Thank you so much.